Today's forage is in the beautiful Peak District. It's a bit blustery, but it's sunny and it's lovely. So we're going to see what we can find today. Yay! Finally, I found some wild garlic leaves big enough worth showing you. So, wild garlic is just starting to come out into season. If you live in the south, you've probably seen it for a week or so now. But up here in Sheffield, it's just starting to poke its little head out. So, wild garlic is one of the easiest wild foods to identify for beginners because of its pungent garlic smell. And everything in the UK that smells of onion or garlic is edible, so you're quite safe. The leaves are spear shaped, glossy bright green with a long rib down the middle. You may be able to see some faint lines that also run up the leaf. The back is much more matte and a paler green with a white rib running down. The leaves are encased in this little papery kind of sack here. It usually grows in little clumps, but all the leaves will grow singularly. You'll never see one stem with two leaves on it. If you do, then it's likely that it's lily of the valley, which is highly toxic. The way to tell if you've got wild garlic is simply to pick it, give it a little crush and smell it. And if it smells of garlic, then you've got wild garlic. If you find a plant that has got grass-like leaves that smells of garlic, then you've likely got three-cornered leek or few flowering leek. If you had a look at my last February foraging video, then I showed you what three-cornered leek looks like in that. When they're just starting to poke through from the bulb, they often can look like crocus or other similar spring bulbs. But as I said, the garlic smell is the dead giveaway for wild garlic. As the leaves get bigger, they fatten out like this. And they're really, really tasty when they're young. When the plant starts to come into flower, the larger leaves are best used for soups and things like that. But when they're nice and young, they've got the most, um, well, the strongest flavor. The bulbs are also edible, but just remember that it is illegal to uproot any wild plant unless you've got the landowner's permission. So this plant down here is growing quite close to the wild garlic. That's the wild garlic there. And just here is a toxic plant called Lords and Ladies. And I mean, when they're big like this, you can tell the difference because Lords and Ladies have the two little tails at the bottom. And another giveaway is they have an outline around the leaf. So can you see that it's kind of got a little border around it? Wild garlic will never ever have that. And wild garlic never has these veins either. But when they are growing like this, you could be forgiven for mistaking them for wild garlic if you're being a bit too hasty with your pickings. So that's why it's always really, really important to make sure you're really studying each leaf that you're picking. So you're not picking any little lookalikes like Lords and Ladies or Lily of the Valley. These are mature Lords and Ladies leaves and you can see that they grow much bigger than wild garlic. But when they're young, they could be mistaken. But they're quite obviously different as the plant gets older. These are the two massive tails and you turn it over and it's a lot lighter matte underneath and it's got this kind of like papery film over the underside of the leaf that you can scratch away. But yeah, don't get this confused with wild garlic. This here is a great little patch to show you what kind of plants grow in the heathlands and shrubs on the moors. So these little sticks here are the stalks of the bilberry plant and bilberries have got really delicious sweet purple dark purple berries in the summertime bilberries are our english blueberries and they taste just the same if not a bit sweeter the reason that we don't use them is because they are quite hard to transport they're so tiny and they take ages to pick so the plant in leaf next to it is cowberry or english lingonberry so the berries are very glossy and shiny i'll leave these ones for the birds Let's see if I can find any more up here. 
So this is a big patch of cowberry, and cowberry is our English lingonberry. And if you've ever been to Ikea and eaten the meatballs with the lingonberry jam, then you'll know these little guys really well. So this is a great time of year to scout out your lingonberry spots because the leaves are evergreen, so they're a lot easier to see. In the summer they kind of get lost amongst the shrub and amongst the bilberries. And you can see here all of the leaves still on the lingonberry. And just behind me we've got the stalks left over from the bilberry plants. They kind of fruit at the same time, but the lingonberry season's much longer. I've actually just seen a few rogue berries still dotted about. So yeah, they can keep fruiting all the way through winter. But yeah, now's a really good time to scout out your lingonberry spots because they're much easier to see. I've got some lovely, lovely heather. Heather's edible and the flowers are really lovely for making into kind of like a summer lemonade. It's a really refreshing kind of florally type drink that's really lovely. Uh, heather flowers can obviously be used to garnish your salads or your plates or anything like that. It's a really nice little plant. So I've left the estate, I've crossed the moorlands, now I'm walking up some big fuck up hill. <laughs> I've not found too many plants yet. Um, might just be one of those days. I think when people are new to foraging, they expect to go out and just find all of these plants and mushrooms. But honestly, some days I'll go out, walk for hours and not really find too much. So it's just one of those games sometimes. But it does make it all the more enjoyable when you find something good. Just got to the top of the hill and I'm in some big kind of climbing place. But sometimes these rock formations are a really good spot for foragers because they provide little microclimates, the shade, the sun, the heat patches, the damp spots. So I'm gonna have a little wander around here, see what I can find. At first glance, I thought this spot was just mostly grasses and moss, but I've actually just found sheep soil. So if you saw my first February foraging video, you will have learnt about common sorrel. And there's quite a few different types of sorrel in the UK. And this is another one. It's a really delicious variety and it's called sheep sorrel. You can find it in most dry kind of acid lands. It really likes heathlands, moorlands, grasses, parks and lawns where it can be quite a troublesome weed as well. As with common sorrel, it's got these little tails, but on sheep sorrel they're much more pronounced. Kind of looks like a little arrowhead or... A fish. This is hoof fungus. But you can't tell why. <laughs> they just look like little hooves. But um, these are great for, again, great for bushcraft. Awesome tinder. Also called tinder bracket. Another pretty little plant that I just found while I was looking for somewhere to go for a wee. <laughs> this is another type of sorrel for you. Wood sorrel. And this is the, probably the prettiest of the bunch. It has these beautiful heart-shaped leaves. So the only other plant that you'll probably get this confused with is clover, which is also edible. Clover doesn't have this remarkable kind of citrusy flavour that all of the sorrels have. So you can just give it a little nibble. And if it's citrusy, then you've got yourself... Wood sorrel. So these are members of the oxalis family and there's loads of different types of oxalis but all of the green leafed varieties are actually edible. So again these contain oxalic acid so should really just be eaten in small amounts but I mean you'd have to eat probably a bowl full of these a few times a week to feel any ill effects. In the spring and summer wood sorrel has these beautiful white flowers that make a really lovely addition to desserts, cocktails. The flowers can also be pink. There are pink varieties. That's why this has also got another common name of pink sorrel as well. A little gift for the squizzles before I go home. <laughs> 